So we are now recording. Uh, and again, this is Maggie Murphy talking about images on JSTOR. So Maggie, I'm going to be muted and with my camera off, but monitoring the chat. Okay, sounds good. Um, so uh, like Sam said, I'm Maggie Murphy. Um, I'm the art and design librarian in UNC Greensboro's University Libraries. Um, and today I'm going to be talking to you about images on JSTOR. Um, so just to get started, uh, to make sure that we're all like thinking about the same thing, um, JSTOR is a database that we subscribe to through UNCG. Um, that is like really best known for um, the access it provides to journal articles and book chapters um, across disciplines. It's a database beloved by humanities faculty and students, but um, it also has resources in social sciences, natural sciences, um, STEM, you know, um, health sciences, and so on. Um, and it also, besides journal articles and books, includes images and primary sources. Um, JSTOR is part of a not-for-profit organization called Ithaca. Um, so a lot of the um, uh, scholarly resources we subscribe to um, on your behalf through the library um, are uh, published by for-profit companies. Um, and JSTOR is uh, a rarity in scholarly publishing in that um, it is under the umbrella of this nonprofit. Um, so ArtStore is a subscription collection of over 2 million images contributed from cultural heritage institutions, so um, museums, archives, libraries, galleries, and so on around the world. ArtStore was previously its own database. Um, so uh, it was hosted on a separate URL, artstore.org, um, but as of August 1st, 2024, artstore.org was retired, um, and now uh, it is officially hosted on jstore.org. Um, and uh, if I click on this link, you'll see that um, they have a sort of little press release here about um, the, uh, the change over from uh, artstore.org to jstore.org. Um, that all of the features that uh, were available on artstore.org are um, still available on JSTOR. And in fact, they have some different features. Um, previously on artstore um, results only, you could only get up to 72 image thumbnails per page. And now there's continuous scroll, things like that. Um, and so uh, to go over these changes, you can review this at jstore.org slash artstore. Very easy to remember. Um, but going back here, uh, can I go full screen? Maybe. I don't know. Um, control shift F. I think that's full screen. Okay, it's just not doing that. That's fine. Um, so uh, to get to either JSTOR or ArtStore, um, if you are on campus and you access either uh, either tool from the UNCG Libraries website uh, by clicking on databases, um, you will see this access provided by University of North Carolina at Greensboro. Um, this comes up automatically if you're on campus. And if you are off campus, um, it'll be pushed through the our IP authentication. So you'll be prompted to log into your UNCG account through Microsoft um, before you get to the tool. Um, however, uh, even if you see access provided by University of North Carolina at Greensboro, you're in, you're good, you can search for and access anything um, on uh, the JSTOR platform, including the ArtStore collection. However, if you want to use um, the workspace, which is a feature that I'll talk about in just a second, you do need to log in. And so what you're doing is you are logging into an individual account. You don't need to register or create one. Um, you already have one. Uh, and that is connected to your UNCG account. Um, and so once you log in, um, even though our UNCG accounts are administered by Microsoft, you are not going to choose login with Microsoft. You're going to choose find my institution. Um, and from here, I like to search for Greensboro. Um, if you start searching for University of North Carolina, it'll pull up all the UNCG uh, uh, um, system schools. Uh, so if you search for Greensboro, you just have to choose it out of this list um, here. Uh, and so once you have logged in, um, and I can do that here to show you what it looks like, um, uh, you will see that it'll have your UNCG email here. Um, if you uh, were previously an art store user, um, all of your image groups uh, should now appear under your um, JSTOR workspace. So everything was migrated for you automatically. 
Um, JSTOR is also one of the rare uh, databases um, that uh, anyone can navigate to and preview content. So you can search and you can see results, but not actually access it um, unless you um, have institutional or um, a personal account. But that means that you don't actually have to go through the UNCG library databases list. You can just navigate uh, in a browser to JSTOR.org. Um, you won't see the access provided. Uh, by University of North Carolina at Greensboro until you then log in through UNCG. Um, so if you're off campus, uh, you can go to jstore.org, log in um, through UNCG, and uh, you'll see this access provided and you'll be logged in. Um, if you're on campus, you can just go to jstore.org. So we really, uh, librarians really emphasize going through the library website to get to our resources because 99.9% .9 of our tools uh, don't allow you to just navigate in the browser to them and access the content. Um, Art Store uh, and JSTOR do allow you to see it. You can't actually open it until um, you have institutional access. Um, but uh, if it's easier to remember JSTOR.org, because that's a very simple URL, um, that is something you can bookmark and go to. Okay, but back to the content here. Um, so the art store collection, like I mentioned uh, several slides ago, um, it includes 2 million images contributed directly from museums, archives, galleries, etc. But these are not the only images on uh, JSTOR. Um, so uh, art store is a collection that universities have to subscribe to in addition to their JSTOR access. Um, but on the JSTOR platform, any JSTOR subscriber has access to images um, part of JSTOR's collections, which include primary source collections. Um, so these are things like um, a scan of a handwritten letter, um, things that you would expect to find um, in uh, special collections in the university archives. Um, and that is why it also includes images contributed directly from university special collections and university archives. So, for example, this image on the right here is a is a um, scan of a album um, in the Mecklenburg County Health Department um, collections within the J. Murray Atkins Library Special Collections and University Archives at UNC Charlotte. Um, and so, this is not part of Art Store. This is part of J. Store's. Uh, image collection. Um, and they also have an open access content uh, collection called Reveal Digital, which I'd like to hear. Um, so all of those things are available uh, in JSTOR outside of the Art Store collection. Um, so to get to images on JSTOR, uh, there are a bunch of different ways to navigate there now. Um, so the first thing you can do is go to JSTOR.com like this. Um, and actually, I'm going to read through the stuff on the slide and then I'll demonstrate rather than going back and forth. So you can go to JSTOR, um, click on the images tab uh, in the search bar, and then do your search. Um, so this is essentially like going to Google and then clicking on images. Um, so you are just searching through the image results in JSTOR. Uh, your results will include all images in JSTOR's collection, including the Art Store collection, um, but also all those primary sources, um, things contributed from university special collections, and so on. And you can filter your results. Uh, one thing I like is that you can filter by resolution, meaning um, the image size. So if you're looking for super large images, um, you can uh, narrow down your results to just those that are high resolution. You can also uh, narrow down by date, classification. Um, so this is something like whether it is a photograph, whether it is a painting, whether it is a map, stuff like that. Geography, so where it was created. Um, collection, uh, so by institution, um, and more. One thing you cannot currently uh, narrow the results down by is copyright status or Creative Commons um, license. And that is something that users have requested um, and that they say that they are exploring. So a shortcut around that, if you are only looking for images um, that are copyright free, um, would be to, to search by date and look for images um, created on or before 1928. Um, another way uh, is to go to JSTOR, click on the Browse drop-down menu, and choose Images, um, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Or you can go to the Art Store portal on JSTOR directly. The easiest way to get to Art Store directly, um, there is a link uh, that is jstor.org slash site slash Art Store, um, but would be to go to the UNCG uh, library website, click on Databases, and then search for Art Store. Um, because they actually make it a little difficult to get to Art Store um, from the JSTOR platform. 
Um, so this is uh, the art store portal. It looks like the old art store website did. Um, you still have the JSTOR menu up top. Um, so uh, the other options I was talking about was go to the JSTOR website, click on images and search. You can also do an advanced search or you can go to browse and then choose images here. I also want to note um, that UNCG has an image collection that is only available to UNCG users called our Visual Resources Collection. Um, and these are images that have been scanned from slides and out of books. Um, they uh, are images that we do not have copyright permission to share outside of UNCG. They are only used for teaching and research by our students and faculty. Um, but there are about 66,000 images in here. Um, and so they directly support um, the specific teaching and research done at UNCG. Um, but if I go back to JSTOR again, um, here's the images search. Uh, and here is what it looks like if I go to browse and then images. It brings me to this portal here. Um, these are all of JSTOR's uh, image collections. You can see a lot of them are um, from uh, institutional collections, so part of University of Glasgow. Um, but if it is an art store collection, we'll say part of art store. Up here, um, these are art store collections uh, here. And so this looks just a little bit different navigation than it did when we were at JSTOR.org site art store. Um, so this looks like the old art store. This is searching or browsing through art store collections from this JSTOR images portal. Um, and then across all of the collections, you can also browse by classification. And again, these are things like painting, sculpture, graphics, et cetera, by the kind of image it is. And then by geography. So across all of those collections, but by um, the place or culture uh, where the image was created. Um, so there are many different ways uh, to access the images on JSTOR. Um, so there are some features um, specific to images on the JSTOR platform um, that are helpful if you are interested in using images. Um, and again, I'm going to read through all these and then I will demonstrate it rather than going back and forth constantly. So uh, there is something called the compare mode. Um, so compare mode lets you view an image um, uh, side by side with multiple images or with texts. Um, so you can do it with up to four items at a time. Um, and it is accessed by looking at um, the item and then clicking on compare. I'll show you this in just a moment. You can also save, Im save images across Art Store and JSTOR collections to your JSTOR workspace. Um, either from viewing a specific image or item um, or from your search results. So you can select multiple things while it is in the thumbnail mode of your search results um, and add them to your workspace. Um, you can add them to your general workspace or to folders. You can create folders while you are saving um, and you can save whole images or save, save image details. Um, so you may be zooming into a particular part of the image. Um, uh, by selecting Save Current Zoom within the Save menu. And again, I will demonstrate this in just a moment. Um, and then uh, you can also export images from your workspace directly to a PowerPoint or PDF. The PowerPoint will be a PowerPoint presentation with one image per slide, and the metadata or cataloging description um, or the caption will appear in the notes field. So it's not on the slide itself, it'll be in the notes. Um, if you export as a PDF, it will be a list of the images in the folder um, with image thumbnails uh, and that sort of metadata or caption information with links back to the items. They have also created a presentation mode straight from your workspace. Um, so instead of creating a PowerPoint um, uh, and downloading it and opening it up, you can present the images um, with a similar viewer uh, straight from your workspace. Um, and then from within particular items, uh, it will, uh, if it has things um, tagged as related, show you related texts or images where available. Um, so I, we are going to just do a sample search and we'll look at all of these features, compare, um, saving, uh, exporting, presenting, um, and then I'll show you where the related texts and images come up if, you, if we have those. Okay, so we're going to do a, a sample search. Um, and so, uh, like I said, we can do it from the art store portal. 
which is jstore.org slash site slash art store. And again, you can see that I am logged in through my UNCG account up here. And because I am on campus, it also says access provided by University of North Carolina at Greensboro. It will say this um, if you are off campus after you log in or if you've navigated to the site from uh, the university library's website. Um, uh, but we can also um, browse images from the JSTOR images um, browsing portal here. Um, and again, these collections include art store collections, et cetera. Um, or we can search across all of these collections, uh, JSTOR's institutional collection, primary source collections, and the art store collection by searching up here uh, under images. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start from images. Um, and I am going to search for jellyfish. Um, because uh, that is something I am currently interested in looking at images of. Um, so uh, here we can see there are 105 results um, uh, to the keyword jellyfish over here. Um, uh, like I said, we can um, filter by image resolution. So if we want super high resolution images, um, we can say greater than 10 megapixels. Um, date here. So like I said, there is no filter for um, uh, public domain or Creative Commons images. So if I want to be sure that something is copyright free and I can use it for any purpose, not just teaching and research, which all of the images in JSTOR have been cleared for. So if it appears in JSTOR, um, you have permission from the various um, uh, contributing institutions to use it for the purpose of nonprofit teaching and research. Um, but if you are interested in potentially using it for um, other purposes, like incorporating it into art for commercial purposes, et cetera, and you want to know that it does not uh, have copyright applied to it, then you would search for things created um, before the date of 1928. Um, in December, this will uh, switch over to December 31st, so actually really January 1st, um, the new, uh, the date will change um, and it advances each year um, on January 1st um, for things that fall into the public domain. Um, and then I can uh, narrow down by classification, geography, um, and if I want to see things that are just in the art store collection versus different uh, institutional collections that contribute to JSTOR here. Um, so from here, uh, I also mentioned uh, the first thing was compare mode. Um, so if I go into this image um, taken by uh, Yosef Albers, um, uh, here uh, is the item details or metadata. Um, here I can use my mouse um, and uh, scroll to zoom in to the image. Um, I can also open it up full screen here. Um, the, the brief item details show here, et cetera. Um, if I escape, I'll get out of screen mode. And if I click compare, this brings up compare mode. Um, and so compare uh, here. First, um, once I have all the images and uh, items that I want to compare, I'll click this little down button to get rid of this um, interface down here. Um, so here it is showing me um, things that were in uh, my search for jellyfish. So let's say I want to compare it to um, this right here, right? Um, so I'm gonna compare that with this and now they're side by side up here. Um, if I click over to text content, uh, then here, let's say I want to also look at this scientific journal article about jellyfish blooms. I'll add that there. Um, and then I can scroll down and you can see I can sort of zoom in over these. Um, I can uh, page right and left through this article. Um, so this is a feature that JSTOR provides uh, while looking at their images. Um, the other thing that I mentioned um, uh, is that you can save um, both entire images and image details from the item view here. So if I am logged in uh, to my account and I click on save, this little menu will pop up. I can save it to my general workspace. I can save it to a specific folder I've already created. I can create a new folder, which I'll do here, and I'll say jellyfish, create and save. And there we saved the entire image. But let's say I zoom in and I really wanna focus on, I don't know, this detail. Um, I can hit save again and choose save current zoom level um, and save it to jellyfish. Um, and so now in the jellyfish folder, I have both the image and the detail I created. Um, if I go back to my search results, I can also add uh, things um, directly 
from this thumbnail mode. And I will save these to the jellyfish folder. Um, and maybe I'll save this one because it's weird looking. I'll just save it by clicking on that, save to workspace, save to jellyfish. Um, so we've looked at compare, we've looked at saving um, to our workspace. We created a folder. Now we're gonna go into that folder um, and I will go into jellyfish here. Here you see the options to export um, and to present. And let's say my jellyfish folder is getting really unwieldy. I can also create subfolders from here. My export options, as I mentioned, um, are export to PowerPoint, export to PDF, and also export to zip, which is just downloading all of the images to a zip folder. Um, so this would be uh, downloading all of the high resolution images um, at once instead of going into each item and clicking on download. Um, so when you download, it'll download this little this image as a folder up here, um, or in this case, uh, directly as a JPEG. Um, if uh, it is a really high resolution image, sometimes it'll um, download multiple um, resolutions at once into a folder. Um, but if I go back to my workspace, uh, let's say my jellyfish folder, I'm gonna refresh to see everything, um, and I export to PowerPoint. If you have a lot of images, this can take a little while, um, so, because we only have six, hopefully it'll only take a second so I can show you what this looks like. There we go. And now it has created a presentation. The title slide just says jellyfish because that was the name of our folder. Um, and here it has one image per slide. And if you can see down below, um, it has uh, the item details for cataloging metadata, the description of the image, its creator, um, and its holding institution uh, that is entered um, by catalogers uh, contributing images to ArtStore. And then finally, um, you can export as a PDF, and it should do this relatively quickly. Um, and what it is creating is a list of all of the images in the file, um, a really brief version of those item details, and then a link back to the image. Um, so this is helpful if you have lots of images um, in a workspace folder. Um, I also mentioned that you can present directly from uh, this interface here by clicking on present and it opens up this viewer. Um, it includes those item details down here as a little caption, but you can hide that if you want to. Um, and you just tab through everything here. If I go to more items, it'll um, allow you to see a, a preview of everything in the folder as well. Um, okay, so the other thing that I wanted to mention again, uh, if I go in here, is that um, you will sometimes see uh, related um, images or related text. Um, so in this case, uh, we have both. So if I scroll down here, um, uh, this is an algorithmic um, feature. So um, this image is coming up as related to, in this case, it says the front matter. So this is the table of contents of this uh, journal issue. And it could be, okay, it's because um, the front matter includes the um, the cover image, uh, which is a jellyfish. So for some reason it's saying, okay, um, yeah, this is an AI research tool um, that, that decided that this uh, was a recommended um, related text for this image. Um, and it's because the cover image of this uh, was a jellyfish. So not actually helpful um, in, in terms of uh, finding um, text in JSTOR related to this image. Um, I would have hoped that maybe it was like a journal article about the moon jellyfish um, or something like that. But in this case, um, it just made a weird connection. Down here um, are related images. And again, this is algorithmic. There's no human saying, okay, this is definitely related. Um, so here we have some other jellyfish. Here, um, this might be called like a jellyfish hem or something like that. Um, uh, in terms of some of the other things in here, like um, this bridge, a traffic jam on this bridge, I'm not really sure why it is showing up. Or um, in this case, Sting, the person, um, is related to the idea of Sting, uh, things that jellyfish do. Um, so again, this is this is a, an AI feature. Um, it may be useful, but not necessarily. Okay, so going back to my slides, 
Um, the other thing that is something that I always point out when we're talking about JSTOR and ArtStore images um, is uh, the issue of that cataloging data, which we call metadata. It's also referred to um, item details in JSTOR. And the problem um, is that way back in the day when the art store collection began to be built, um, all of that data about the images was contributed by the institution that, um, that uploaded the image. So because the images were uploaded by hundreds, if not thousands of institutions, each of those institutions, the different museum, the different archive, the different library, uses different cataloging standards, different rules for cataloging. Um, and so uh, as a result, um, both the way that it is structured um, in the different fields um, and the amount of completeness um, of the metadata varies wild from, uh, wildly from image to image and collection to collection. This makes it difficult to search comprehensively, meaning if you want to find every image um, every image of a work by a particular artist. Um, it makes it difficult to find everything by that artist because their name may have been structured a bunch of different ways. I'll show you in just a second. Um, and this also um, messes up the way that citations are generated. Um, so I'm going to go back into my workspace here. Um, let's go here. Um, nope, I don't want to do that my workspace. I mean, I'm going to go into a folder that I maintain called cataloging examples. Um, and so, uh, okay, so this is a great example. Um, so here are a bunch of images by um, Rene Magritte. Um, and if we look at this one, we see that um, Rene Magritte's name is structured as a uh, first name, last name, Rene Magritte, comma, Belgian, comma, 1898 to 1967. Um, this is different than it is in this one, where their name is just Rene Magritte. Um, and it is different than it is uh, in this one, which has all of this stuff in it. Um, and so if I click on this, this is going to bring me to just Rene Magritte with all of this stuff in it, which is only this image, um, versus if I click on it, here, um, and I'll get the Rene Magritte's um, that just have like this. Yeah, um, Sam, this is a gigantic problem that they are aware of um, and are basically like, we'd have to start from scratch to fix. Um, so it's a nightmare for users if, if you care about metadata. The other thing that this affects um, is, uh, so if we go back to this one where they've got like all of this uh, information um, about Rene Magritte in the, in the author or artist field here, creator. If I go to site, all of that gets ported into the author field in the citation. Um, so if I were to use this generated citation, um, in none of these styles does the artist culture, um, uh, city of birth, um, uh, like dates that they were alive, belong right next to their name in um, that citation. Uh, so you have to know um, that uh, you need to strip all of this out in, in the different citation styles. Um, and that is not something that they necessarily make clear for you. They say make necessary connections, but uh, co corrections, but you don't necessarily know that that, that doesn't belong there. Okay, so I've gone a, a minute over time already. Um, and so uh, I can stay a little longer for questions um, if uh, you have any. Um, and then I also shared my slides with Sam um, so that she can send them out with these additional resources. JSTOR has um, their own guides uh, to their resources. Um, including uh, a guide to working with images on JSTOR. They have a bunch of their own webinars. Um, some of them are upcoming and some are recordings. So they recently did um, a webinar called JSTOR for Images. Um, and then they have a great resource called JSTOR Daily, which is just um, a daily blog highlighting stuff in JSTOR and Art Store collections. Um, and that was everything. Sorry to keep you a minute or two late. 
Um, but hopefully that was a helpful overview. Um, and you can always contact me uh, for questions um, about finding and using images in, in these questions or across everything we have access to at UNCG. I love working with students related to images. Great. So I put a lot of links in the chat, um, one for an assessment, um, one for the information for the next webinar, which is um, Jackson Library Renovation Updates by Amy harris Halk on Thursday, November 21st at 1 p.m. Um, I need to head out for instruction, uh, but this can continue as long as anyone needs to. I saw some people um, typing in the chat. Um, so I... All right. Sarah, did you have any questions? Okay, sounds great. Um, well, uh, thanks again for coming. Um, and yeah, if you do have any questions, um, my email um, uh, is, I'll just put it right here too. Um, but you can find me on any of the, uh, the art libguides, the finding images libguide. Um, I am the art and design librarian. Okay, well, thanks, Maggie. And thanks, Sam. thanks everyone for coming. And um, I'll send the email out with all the stuff um, within the next couple of days. All so, right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.